Some of the files that you are looking for may or may not be archived. Some are, I was told that some are already archived and some may not be. However, we have to take the time to find out where they are. This is Susan Bassey, and this is a video about public records and our local elections and the government that is in charge of those elections. Because we've been investigating the secret judge club where political forums were held in secret with only certain reporters invited. And we've been looking at all the records and noticing that several of these judges, police officers, district attorneys, mayors, and county supervisors failed to disclose that they were getting money or behest payments related to these local elections. And when investigating the FPPC, which is the agency that regulates elections in the state of California, said that judges appear to just simply make up their own rules when it comes to elections. Okay. Oh, so we won't be able to show you anything today. Um, you can put in a request and then uh, we'll have to do like a CPRA again because there's going to be Okay, but a CPRA is not a, uh, to be clear, a CPRA is a request for documents. You can't produce the documents, so I'm requesting to view it. So somehow you guys have to make sure that I can view it. Yeah, you'll, you'll be able to view it, but we, we have to make sure that we can collect all the information first. Uh, so you have none in the peekaboo file over there right now from what I just asked for. None of the I, DA to any 22 no, elections. We'll, we'll have to dig for it. I'm, I'm not sure. What, well, last time it took sure. about 20 minutes for them to dig for it. And I really need the DA records. I have been sent specifically by the FPPC to look for information that I need. And we're doing an investigation. This is, we're talking interference with our local, state, and federal elections. Sure, and sure. this is a really big deal. This is a bigger deal than what happened just in 2020 with the presidential elections and everything else. And so I need to see the 2022 elections, um, the, the nomination for who nominated Jeff Rosen in 2022. And it's only 2023, so I doubt that they're not in that file because last time I got them in, 2020 and it was for the 2018 election so two years later they were still in that file yeah i understand I, this is the information that i was given so so i would like I to, to see what's in that file right now there's no, nothing in the file i just if you're telling me that there is nothing for me to view in that file so that i can see who nominated jeff rosen in 22 that's a problem and i want to talk to somebody that is going to explain why that is okay i can i can find out um uh in regards to your other question, you were asking about the 460s. Yes. And, uh, well, mm -hmm. are you able to pull that? So, okay. So with the 460s, uh, those are Can I get those remotely? Because I have researchers that are able, wanting to do that remotely, so. They're, they're available online. Okay, so if you can show us, we're, what we're gonna do is. And for the remainder of this video, I'm gonna show you how you go about investigating your local elections and the public records that you're going to need to do so whether it's for sheriff, mayor, or district attorney. Video for all my people that are doing research on this. So you'll just have to go to SEC Vote. Okay. I guess we'll work here, but. Let me show you how to get, um, let me show you how to get in this page before I show you this. Cause okay. before you, um, you'll be able to see this, um, you have to go to secvote.org. Okay. And there's there, I, I can show you real quick. The reason these records are important is because they're related to a public corruption and bribery investigation, an investigation that the local district attorney is trying to deflect. Because meanwhile, he was prosecuting members of the sheriff's department in connection with the same election and concealed carry permits. Recently, the Court of Appeal reversed a bribery charge, reinstating the charges for bribery, and when they did, they failed to acknowledge the fact that this secret bar bench media police committee was going on, and not one of the judges, mayors, supervisors, district attorneys, or sheriffs who was getting a benefit from these forums disclosed them on their disclosure forms related to their campaigns. And when they don't disclose behest payments, that's fraud on the voters. It's not voting machines. It's what these people are doing in secret and out of the public eye with public and private funds that are affecting not only our elections and legal outcomes, but the headlines that are being written about them. This one right here? Yes. So let's see, click that. 
Oh, but the ones that are all paper related to that. Um, just like 501, the statement, like one, like um, statement of intention. So the FPPC told me that I'm looking for on the 460 that where he would have put behest payments. So right, that looks like those are all those visible, are visible, right? Exactly. Okay. So let's see this one. Let me cancel that one because I think that's the first one I click. Let me click that again. Oh, this might not. Let's see if we can do one to open. Let's see, open. Hopefully they have, oh yeah, here. Yeah. So it will give you like the pages and you can, um, you can. And can you show me where behest payments would be? Which one is that exactly? Um, the contribution? Um, behest payments. Those are payments made on his behalf. Um, um, for instance, so he was in that Bar Bench Media Police Committee and he had was a speaker and he attended the dinners and dinners were paid for him when he was campaigning. And so the FPPC said where to look to see if he disclosed any of the bar bench media. So he, this is the entire one. I don't know like the specific that you're looking for, but these, these are all the contribution. It's the name are all there. Um, the, the his cost expendi expenditure exactly okay so usually it's schedule a or monetary i think it's c it's schedule c, c. so c that like you can see it right here let's see in the first page you can see all the um, contribution expenditure and current. right that and so then those are the one but i'm looking for schedule c is that on here that's the that's just the only um statement that he he submitted in this particular period is you there, might want to explore but is there a schedule other. c lower on it no not for this not for because this is period 7 1 to 22 to 12 31 20 22. oh and he had you one might, and he had one so you might want to check if you want to check, check you might want to check this one so they did um they have to submit like pre yeah that one can we so look at that one and see if there's a c on it um, or oh you're a click i'm used to touch no no yeah that one yeah that one And then down any behest payments. No schedule C on that? You mean non-monetary? Right, non-monetary. So None. Right no, it says zero there. Behest payments are payments that people make on a political candidate's behalf. And for years, Jeff Rosen, sheriffs, political candidates for mayor and supervisor, and even judges sat in these meetings and they got free dinners paid for by taxpayers and they had a lot of attorneys shuffling over private and government checks. And therefore, they were required to disclose the money that was paid that benefited their political campaigns and they didn't do so. Hi. Hi, I'm Bryn there. I'm the Hi. Community Services Manager. Nice to meet you. You too. So, um, we can get you the documents for view only. They're not uh, copying. I, I understand that I need to see who nominated Jeff Rosen in 2022. That's what I came to see today. Just 2022? Right now, yes, I already okay. know 18. Okay, so we need to take some time to be able to uh, go pull some files and stuff and figure out which elections he was on because they can, you know, they, they can so, be on a primary and they can, it's not as simple as you think, Okay. but I'm just saying that uh, it does take us a little bit of time. So are, are you wanting- Last time it didn't take him that long and it's right in that file right over there. Well, and I, we'll take a look at it. Okay, I just wanna see who nominated in 2022. I know the code, it's right there on your thing. I can only view it. We're not gonna copy it. I understand that. I need to see who nominated him in 2022. I know 2018, I need to know 2022. Okay, well, I'm waiting for a call back to figure out um, how we can bring it out and be viewable. So can you wait for a few minutes? Sure, I can show, I can tell you how they did it last time. I, 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 I'm working with somebody else to figure that out. Okay. So um, once we uh, get that determined, um, I have no idea how long it's gonna take um, but we will get something out to you as soon as quickly as possible. Okay, we're gonna wait, and but we don't have all day to wait, so. Well, it's that's part of the process. I understand that, but last time they told me that too, and it was right in that file the whole time. And this so. is actually part of the CPRA. Spoiler alert, we eventually got the records, but we sure had a difficult time dealing with people who kept trying to hide or tell us that the records would be delayed. We ended up waiting over two hours that day to get these records, records that showed who nominated the district attorney and who had a financial incentive to violate people's civil rights. It is, And I'm not gonna argue with you It's part this. of the CPRA process, but we can provide you the documents at the front counter and order for you to view it. 
That's right. But we, if it's voluminous, if we have to go into it's our one storage, candidate and his nominee who I'm nominated just trying, him. I'm explaining to you what. The and the election is. was a year ago. Okay, I'm explaining to you what the process is. That's all I'm doing. Okay, I understand the law on public records law. I'm a journalist, so I understand that. I also have done this before, and I got them in 2018, and they didn't have them ready for 2022 yet. And so from the last time I was here in tw February of 2020, that can't be that long of a time. This is one local DA and the only time he's had opponents. So you just want Jeff Rosen? I just want Jeff Rosen okay. right now. Well, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Okay, thanks. While the staffers working this office were as helpful as they were able to be, it was the supervisor that left us with the feeling that they didn't want to give us access to the records we were entitled to see. It is, and I'm not going to argue with you about this. And while the courts have announced that this secret club is now being shut down shortly after we got some of the records, we continue to look for records to determine the influence that this committee continues to have influence when their members become the police auditors and the conflicts with those police officers, prosecutors, and judges are never disclosed or never brought into the public eye. And so we're going to continue to ask for records. And I'm going to show you how we do it and you can tell us what we missed. And we're looking at certain elections for the district attorney's race, number one. And then we're also looking starting at the mayor's race for San city of San Jose, which probably wouldn't have a lot here, but if you have anything here, I want to know. And then I'm looking for the state Senate races and any races involving Dave Cortese, including his supervisor race and his state Senate race. And what I'm looking at is there was a bar bench media police committee in this county for 30 years. It was not public. The forums were not publicly noticed. They used public and private money. They invited candidates to speak at it. And when they did invite the candidates to speak to it, they didn't invite the public. And the we are not finding any behest payments. And what the FPPC told me was that they were required to, um, they were required to list when they went to those, I, I've now documented how those meetings were paid for. They were held at the Three Flames. There were five of them a year. They invited all the judges, a lot of people from the district attorney's office, and they and your election people, um, the former San Jose Mercury reporters. There were a lot of Mercury reporters going there. And so we have election officials there. We have former Mercury reporters, NBC reporters, but all reporters were not invited. So the public was not all invited. Um, the public paid for through the state funds, the dinners. There were also private payments for the dinners. And then there was the facility itself, and they gave them a discount because of who they were, which the facility told me that themselves. So the FPPC said that anybody who appeared at those meetings in a political forum, including the judges, would have had to list a behest payment for the bar bench media police meetings. So I am looking for 460 forms. I am I need to look in your peekaboo file of who nominated Dave Cortese who nominated Sam Licardo in each of his elections. If you, you, and you might not have city, um, you don't have city of San Jose mayor um, information here, or do you? Um, any, any city elections would have to be, go, would have to be to, the to the city. Okay, so I'm gonna go to San Jose city for those. But Dave Cortez, he was a supervisor, so I wanna see each time he ran for supervisor. I wanna see who nominated him, and I wanna see if he ever put any behest payments for the Bar Bench Media Police Committee. And I'm looking specifically at Dave Cortese and Ann Ravel's um, state Senate race. Um, the last one that they had when they were in a runoff, I think it was um, 2020. I have to, we have to, I have to, we'll go over that. But what I'm looking for is they did a, they went to that meeting and it was after Nora Campos had been kicked out at the primary they went to the bar bench media meeting and I want to see if their behest payments were on those forms. Okay, and so I would have to ask, I mean, you have a, it's a long list of things that you request. Right, you and I, I don't know where to get it and the FPPC has directed me to for specifically what I need to look for. And then I know you have the file over here related to Jeff Rosen's 2022 election. So it would have been for 2022, for Jeff Rosen, Sajid Khan and Daniel Chung. All three of them. Okay. And then what exactly 
are you looking so for? So there's, a, there is, we went through this last time. There's a form and I can, they know the rule, but that on the nomination, you're not allowed to take a copy of it, but I'm allowed to see it. I'm allowed to see who right. nominated them. I want to see that for those elections. I want to see it for the DA's race and I want to see it for the state Senate race involving Dave Cortez and Ann Gravel. Okay, so do you have the actual, because we're going, you're talking about different elections from Correct. different years. I'm to, and, the, and the FPPC has directed me of how to look for it. Their jurisdiction is back five years, but we're going a little further than that because the bar bench was concealed from the public. Okay, so you wanted... So the, the, the main the people that I'm looking for, well, okay, I can start with 2018 because I know that off the top of my head. Okay. I'm going to, 2018, I'm looking for Jeff Rosen. I'm looking for John Hirakawa. And then I am looking for the state senator race, which followed that, which would have been for Ann Ravel and Dave Cortese. And I'm also looking for all of Dave Cortez's um, supervisor races on the 460 forms. And all I know Cortez's supervisor. He was a Santa, Z Santa Clara uh, supervisor. Yeah. And then he turned out and he became a state senator. Yes. So, so all he Cortez's supervisor. 460. Uh, and also, I want to know who nominated him for each election. And that I have to peek at. And I want to see, last time I was here, the 2022 race wasn't available for the DA. So I need that for Jeff Rosen. And I need that for um, Sajid Khan and Daniel Chung. Uh, what was the second one? Khan? Khan. K-A-H-N. And then I also want to look at the sheriff's race that was the most recent sheriff's race. I got it before on, um, well, I need to look at John Hirakawa because I didn't look at him. But when, um, after Lori Smith was indicted and after 2020, there was another sheriff's race. And I want to look at the most recent sheriff's race. I want to see who nominated each player and I, each uh, candidate. And I want to see their 460 forms to find out if anybody disclosed the Bar Bench Media Police Committee. And then I do have some issues internally with the um, County Voter Registrar Office. And that is that, it, that the county hired a former San Jose Mercury reporter, Eric, can't remember his last name. Um, I have him in my videos. And he told me he was a former reporter, but I just found him in the bar bench media police records as well. So that means you have a former Mercury reporter who was going to those meetings, who knew about those meetings, who then went to this office. And if these payments were not on the behest payments and the reaction that I got from him when I came here looking for information was not openly and friendly. He was trying to deter my reporting on this thing. And that bothers me. And oh, so you were here when, or you spoke with him when he went here? He, I have videos then, of him up posted online. Oh, okay. I've been covering this for some time and there have been things that didn't add up. And in 2022, we found the bar bench media police committee and I found him in those records. And that was after I had been here before. So now we're looking at, we have a former San Jose Mercury reporter. The San Jose Mercury was involved in all of these um, meetings. They were at all of them. They were reporting on the elections. They were in the secret meetings. They were one of the press agencies, they and NBC. They not only were attendees, they were actual members. They were members of the bar bench, which means they were privy to the political forums being set up. They were invited to attend. Um, if they were speakers, which a lot of times their reporters were, the state was paying for, um, out of the grand jury budget, was paying for their meals and they would be speakers. I don't think that I saw him in as a speaker. I'm not familiar with all the names. There's thousands of records and we're trying to go through and look at the conflicts. But the fact that there's a pattern of the county hiring these former Mercury reporters who were involved in this bar bench into big positions in the county where they have an ability to deter investigations and other media. Mm -hmm. That's troublesome for me. Okay. And so I am looking at that and I'm gonna to wanna to look at all of his pre-employment. I'll do a public records request for that, but that's gonna be a pre-employment request and everything else. But 
it's probably in a supervisory role, you need to know that that is looming in the background. It has a very bad optic and the whole committee has a bad optic. And if I hear statute of limitations one more time again, I'm gonna vomit because the public didn't know about this, but okay. elected officials did. And so did county employees. Okay. Can I get your last name again? Bassi, B-A-S-S-I. Oh, B-A-S-S-I, okay. Let me see what I can find out from them and then, are you gonna be around? I, I'm waiting because I, at the very least, the one thing I know I have to do from here is look at that file on all those people. Okay. For, jet, for I mean, DA's race and the state senate race, who nominated? Those are the things I need for sure. DA's and the state senate. From 2018. Yeah. No, for 2020, 18 and 2022, because last time the 2022 ones weren't available. So I need both. Oh, it's both the state, so I right now I have state senate in 2018, right? The, I, I don't the think DA the state senate race, I, I can look it up. Uh, I mean, we can look it up right now, but the state Senate race was not the same as the, on the same cycle as the DA race. So they're going to be off. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. One second. Thank you.